Hello, everybody. This is Alex Voss, your professor at TVE Course, and this is a reinforcement class on parallel resistive circuits. Now, parallel resistive circuits, we've already talked about them in class, and basically it's a circuit similar to what you have in your house wiring. The same voltage applies to all loads in electrical uh, parallel resistive circuit, and the current will divide according to the loads, and uh, so each load has a same voltage but a varying current depending on the resistance of the load. This is a wonderful public domain class that will reinforce our understanding of parallel resistive circuits. I know this this film may be old, but you know what? The theory hasn't changed, and it is actually one of the best things I've seen for giving you a simple idea about how these things work. I appreciate you, and let's go to the movie now. Electricity does many useful jobs. You've just seen a few examples. Now, the type of job it does is determined by the type of circuit we use to control it. Here are two strings of Christmas lights. At first glance, there appears to be little difference, but watch what happens when I remove one bulb from each string. Now, why did all of the lights go out in this one circuit and not in the other? Well, that's because we have two different types of circuits. This one is a series circuit. This one is a parallel circuit. Now, you know the laws of series circuits. It has the same current throughout the circuit, and the voltage is divided among the various bulbs. When one bulb burns out or is removed, the current path is broken and the entire circuit is disabled. Obviously, this parallel circuit is different in some way. In this lesson, we'll discover exactly what these differences are. Now, in this series circuit, it's obvious that removing any component stops all current. But it isn't so obvious in this parallel circuit, why it remains lit. The circuit on this trainer is a parallel circuit similar to the parallel string of Christmas tree lights. By using it, we should be able to figure out why the bulbs remain lit. First, notice that there's a separate path for current through each of the bulbs. Now, we refer to these paths as branches. On schematic drawings and sometimes in actual circuits, these branches are laid out as they are here. That is, the branches are parallel to one another and to the power supply. This gives us the name for this type of circuit. It's a parallel circuit. When I close this switch, I'm adding a third branch in parallel with the first two. Now observe the brilliance of these two lights as I do this again. When I close the switch, there's no effect on the brilliance here. Watch again as I open the switch. Again, no effect. But why? Well, this is because each branch is a separate path for current. We can add as many branches as we like, provided we don't overload the circuit. Keep in mind, then, that each branch is independent of all the other branches. Now, that's why the remaining bulbs remain lit when one is removed or burns out in a parallel string of Christmas tree lights. Okay, so the parallel circuit has more than one path for current. But what about the voltage? Well, notice on this trainer that each branch is connected directly across the battery. Let's investigate this further by building a parallel circuit. 
Now I'll take this one out, and I'll start by connecting one bulb across the battery, like this. Now, when the bulb is placed in this manner, it's pretty obvious that the applied voltage is across the bulb. If I place a second bulb over here, like this, it's obvious that I still have the applied voltage across each light. Now, this is because that each of the branches is connected directly across the battery. If I move this light over here like this, I have exactly the same circuit. The total voltage still appears across each branch. Now, since the applied voltage is felt across this bulb, I should be able to connect this one like this and still have the applied voltage across it. And you can see that it's starting to look like a parallel circuit. Now, we could add a third branch, a fourth branch, and on and on. Each branch would still have the total applied voltage. Now, this fact is supported by Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states, in effect, that the applied voltage is dropped around each closed loop. All right. A parallel circuit has more than one path for current, and the applied voltage is felt across each branch. Next, let's investigate the current distribution in a parallel circuit. And I'll use another trainer to show this. making the power connections here. Okay, let's look at the current in a parallel circuit. Notice first that we have four milliameters in the circuit. Also notice that the current leaving the negative terminal of the battery, all of the current must pass through this meter. Then we'll use it to measure the total circuit current. The other meters will measure the current in the individual branches. Now, it'll do that when I close these switches, of course. So let's start by closing this switch. By doing so, I complete a path for current through this first branch. Now, notice the readings on this meter and on this one. They're identical. Well, that shouldn't surprise anyone. We have one branch, a series circuit. So branch current and total current must be the same. Now watch the total current indication when I close this switch down here. It increased. But why? This is because we added a parallel branch. This second branch is now drawing current from the battery. And if we add this current and this current, would find that their sum is equal to total current. Well, let's see what happens when we add this third branch. Closing this switch, watch total current. Total current increased again. In fact, it increased by the same amount as the current through this third branch. Then we must conclude that the total current is equal to the sum of the individual branch currents. In other words, the parallel circuit is a current divider, and the total current is divided among the various branches. Now, there's one other thing that we should have noticed about this circuit. This is the current resistance ratio. For example, the branch with the smallest resistor has the largest current. When we go to a branch with a larger resistance, we find that the current has decreased. So that eventually, the branch with the largest resistance has the smallest current. Well, this is only logical since Ohm's law is used to determine current. Remember, the total voltage 
appears across each branch, then the current in any one branch must be equal to the applied voltage divided by the resistance of that branch. Now, the total resistance in a parallel circuit is a little less obvious. In this circuit, we observe that each time we added a branch, the total current increased. Then we can say that when we add resistors in parallel, we must be decreasing the total resistance. 